this is Kai. And if you look closely, you might see a bit of yourself in him. Kai feels stuck. He wakes up tired, pours coffee to start his engine, and then grazes through the day. A pastry here, a sandwich there, a handful of chips in the afternoon, a big dinner, and a late night snack just because. He's not just eating when he's hungry. He's eating because the clock says it's time, because he's bored, because he's stressed. His body has become a 24-7 food processing plant with no holidays and no downtime. And the result? A constant, low-grade fatigue that has become his new normal. A persistent brain fog that makes deep focus feel like a distant memory. He carries a weight that isn't just on the scale, it's a weight on his spirit. He feels trapped in a relentless cycle of eat, crash, repeat. He's tried diets, all of them. They felt like a punishment, a battle of willpower he was destined to lose. Each failure left him feeling more broken, more convinced that this was just how life was meant to be. But deep down, a quiet voice wonders, is this really living? Or is there a different way? A way to work with his body, not against it. A way to reclaim the energy and clarity he knows is buried somewhere inside. This is the story of Kai's discovery, a journey back to an ancient rhythm our bodies have never forgotten. One day, scrolling through a sea of information, Kai stumbles upon two words, intermittent fasting. At first, he scoffs. Fasting? You mean starving myself? No thank you. The idea felt extreme, reserved for monks on mountaintops, not for regular people like him. But his curiosity was piqued. He read on, and what he discovered surprised him. Intermittent fasting wasn't a diet in the traditional sense. It wasn't about meticulously counting every calorie or demonizing entire food groups. It was simpler. It was about when you eat, not just what you eat. It was about creating a dedicated window of time for eating each day and a longer window for not eating, for resting, for repairing. The most common approach he found was the 16-8 method, a 16-hour fast followed by an 8-hour eating window. He could eat a full day's worth of food just within a more compressed time frame. For Kai, this could mean finishing dinner by 8 p.m. and not eating again until noon the next day. The idea began to shift in his mind. This wasn't about deprivation. It was about giving his digestive system, his cells, his very DNA a well-deserved break. It was about intentionally creating a period of quiet for his body to do what it's naturally designed to do, heal itself. The science was compelling, but the question remained, could he actually do it? Kai decided to try. He wasn't aiming for perfection. He was just aiming to begin. The first day was uh, a challenge. Kai finished his dinner at 7 p.m. and braced himself. The evening was fine, but waking up was different. The familiar morning ritual of toast and coffee was replaced with just coffee, black. By 10 a.m., his stomach began to rumble. It wasn't just a rumble. It felt like a protest, a loud, demanding roar from deep within. This is the work of ghrelin, often called the hunger hormone. Ghrelin is clever. It's trained by your habits. If you always eat at 8 a.m., your ghrelin levels will faithfully spike at 8 a.m., sending a powerful signal to your brain, feed me. Kai felt this signal, loud and clear. His mind raced. This is a mistake. My body needs fuel. I'm going to crash. He watched the clock, each minute stretching into an eternity. He drank water. He drank more coffee. The hunger came in waves, rising to a peak and then, surprisingly, subsiding. He learned his first crucial lesson. Hunger is not an emergency. It's a signal, a sensation, and like any wave, it passes. He made it to noon. That first meal felt incredible, not just because he was hungry, but because he had accomplished something. He had listened to his body's protest, but didn't immediately surrender. He had navigated the discomfort and come out on the other side. 
This small victory felt bigger than any number on a scale. It was a reclaiming of control. Four years after Kai finished eating, his body was busy running on the fuel he had just given it, glucose from carbohydrates. It's an easy, quick-burning energy source. His body would use what it needed and then diligently store the rest in his liver and muscles as something called glycogen. Think of glycogen as the money in your wallet, easily accessible for immediate spending. But Kai's wallet was always full. Because he was eating constantly, he never gave his body a chance to spend what was in the wallet, let alone dip into its savings account. That savings account is his body fat. Then, around 12 to 14 hours into his first fast, something incredible happened. The money in the wallet, the glycogen stores, ran out. For a moment, his body panicked. Where is the next meal? The glucose isn't coming. But our bodies are miraculous survival machines. They have a backup generator. This moment is called the metabolic switch. His body, realizing no more easy glucose was coming, flipped a switch and turned to its vast energy reserves, his stored body fat. It began breaking down this fat into powerful molecules called ketones. If glucose is like burning kindling, fast and smoky, ketones are like burning a solid oak log, slow, steady, and clean. These ketones travel through the bloodstream, providing a stable, efficient source of energy, especially for the most energy-demanding organ of all, the brain. Kai wasn't just starving, he was transforming. He was teaching his body to become metabolically flexible, to expertly switch from burning sugar to burning fat. As Kai continued his fasting practice, a deeper, more profound process was beginning within every single one of his trillions of cells. It's a process so important. Its discovery won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2016. It's called autophagy. Autophagy literally means self-eating. And while that sounds alarming, it is one of the most beautiful, rejuvenating processes in the human body. Imagine your house. Over time, things get old. A chair breaks, paint peels, dust accumulates, and junk piles up in the corners. If you never clean it, the house becomes dysfunctional. Autophagy is your body's cellular spring cleaning crew. During the fasted state, when the cells aren't busy processing incoming food, they turn their attention inward. They begin to seek out old, damaged, or misfolded proteins, broken cellular components, and even invading viruses and bacteria. They engulf this cellular junk, break it down into its raw materials, and then recycle those materials to build new, healthy cellular parts or to use for energy. It is the ultimate recycling and quality control program. By giving his body a regular break from eating, Kai was turning on this ancient cleansing mechanism. He was allowing his body to repair itself from the inside out, reducing inflammation, clearing out cellular debris that can lead to disease, and essentially slowing down the aging process at a microscopic level. This wasn't just about how he looked, it was about how his body was fundamentally functioning. After a week or two, Kai noticed something he hadn't expected. The persistent brain fog that had clouded his mornings was beginning to lift. It was like a dimmer switch was slowly being turned up in his mind. His focus at work became sharper, words came more easily, he felt clearer. This wasn't a placebo effect, this was biology at work. The ketones his body was now producing are a superior fuel for the brain. They cross the blood-brain barrier with ease and provide a more stable energy source than glucose, which can cause energy spikes and crashes. But something even more remarkable was happening. 
fasting stimulates the production of a powerful protein called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF. Think of BDNF as fertilizer for your brain cells. It plays a critical role in neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to form new connections and pathways. BDNF helps existing neurons survive, encourages the growth of new neurons and synapses, and is vital for learning and memory. Low levels of BDNF are linked to depression, anxiety, and neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. By practicing intermittent fasting, Kai was literally increasing the amount of this miracle grow in his brain, protecting it against age-related decline and enhancing its day-to-day -day performance. The mental clarity he was feeling wasn't just in his head, it was a physical change happening within his skull. For years, Kai's body had been fighting a silent battle with insulin. Every time he ate, especially processed carbohydrates and sugars, his pancreas released insulin to shuttle the resulting glucose out of his bloodstream and into his cells for energy. But because he was eating so frequently, his insulin levels were almost constantly elevated. His cells, bombarded by insulin's constant knocking, started to become desensitized. They stopped listening. This is insulin resistance, a precursor to type 2 diabetes and a driver of chronic inflammation throughout the body. Imagine insulin as a key and your cells as a lock. With insulin resistance, the lock gets rusty and the key doesn't work as well. The pancreas has to produce more and more insulin, yelling louder and louder to get the same job done. Intermittent fasting was the hero in this story. By creating a daily period with no food intake, Kai gave his pancreas a break. His baseline insulin levels dropped dramatically. With insulin low, his cells had a chance to rest and regain their sensitivity. The rusty locks were being oiled. His body was becoming incredibly efficient at managing blood sugar again. He was taming the insulin dragon. This single change had a ripple effect, reducing his risk of numerous chronic diseases, helping his body access stored fat more easily, and calming the systemic inflammation that was at the root of his fatigue and aches. He was not just managing a symptom, he was healing the underlying cause. While many people come to intermittent fasting for weight loss, Kai soon realized that was just the tip of the iceberg. The most profound changes were the ones he hadn't even been looking for. His sleep, once restless and broken, became deeper and more restorative. Without a late night meal to digest, his body could fully dedicate its resources to rest and repair during the night. The dreaded 3 p.m. energy slump, which used to have him reaching for another coffee or a sugary snack, simply vanished. Because his body was now adept at burning fat for fuel, he had a steady supply of energy all day long. There were no more dramatic blood sugar swings, and his mood became more stable as a result. He also noticed his digestion improved. For years, he had suffered from bloating and discomfort. By giving his digestive tract a 16-hour break each day, he was allowing the lining of his gut to heal and the complex ecosystem of his gut microbiome to rebalance. It was a complete systemic upgrade. He was building a body that was more resilient, more efficient, and fundamentally healthier, from his gut to his brain. He felt a newfound sense of energy that wasn't dependent on his next caffeine hit or sugar rush. It was a clean, steady energy that came from within. Kai understood that for this to work long-term, it couldn't feel like a prison. It had to be a sustainable lifestyle. He learned the importance of flexibility, if he had a special dinner with family, he would enjoy it without guilt and simply adjust his schedule the next day. This wasn't about rigid rules, it was about a consistent pattern. He discovered some key strategies that made the process almost effortless. Hydration was number one. Drinking plenty of water and sometimes black coffee or herbal tea during his fasting window helped manage hunger and keep him feeling good. 
he also learned to start slow. He didn't jump into a 16-hour fast on day one. He started with 12 hours, then gradually extended it as his body adapted. Most importantly, he focused on the quality of his food during his eating window. He knew that breaking his fast with junk food would defeat the purpose. He filled his plate with nutrient-dense foods, lean proteins, healthy fats, and lots of colorful vegetables. This nourished his body deeply and made the fasting periods easier. He was learning to listen to his body's signals in a way he never had before. He was distinguishing true hunger from boredom or habit. Intermittent fasting wasn't about ignoring his body. It was about finally being in conversation with it. This is Kai now. The change isn't just visible on the outside. The true transformation happened within. The fog has lifted, replaced by a clarity he thought he had lost forever. The fatigue has been replaced by a steady, reliable energy that powers him through his entire day. He no longer feels like a prisoner to food cravings and schedules. He has found freedom. Freedom from the eat, crash, repeat cycle. Freedom from the constant mental negotiation about what and when to eat. The scale shows a number he is happy with, but that's just a footnote in a much larger story. The real story is about reclaiming his health, his focus, and his vitality. Intermittent fasting wasn't a magic pill. It was a tool that allowed him to unlock his body's own incredible, innate ability to heal and thrive. It was a journey back to a more natural human rhythm. He learned that sometimes the most powerful thing you can do for your body is to simply get out of its way and let it do its work. His new dawn wasn't just about a new way of eating. It was about a new way of living, a life reclaimed.